Next up, a wonderful thesis topic. Translating sacred texts from and into Te Reo Māori, it's a battlefield. Would you please welcome to the stage Gillian Tepini. I need here to acknowledge, please, the artist who kindly allowed me to use this image, Judy Kipa, Nongai Terangi, and also to acknowledge the phenomenal support of my supervisors and my, my whanau. Kia ora. <clears throat> my initiation into the battlefield that is translating sacred texts came when I was just a rookie. I was assigned an old manuscript about the Ngāpuhi Wars to translate from Māori to English. That manuscript contained often graphic accounts of the intertribal battles of the 18th and 19th centuries. Being a written account of oral histories handed down over generations, for us of Ngāpuhi Te Rarua and other northern tribes, it is a sacred document, a taonga of great significance. But when I looked to translation literature for strategies on how to go about such a translation, I found very little that was helpful. I could go further and say that theories on translation were totally inadequate as far as addressing the particular issues that I faced. Language is complex, and that means that translation is challenging. Lots of people think it's a simple matter of finding alternative words in one language for words in another language, but often there aren't any real alternatives. Take a word like kaitiakitanga. The Resource Management Act translates it literally as, as guardianship, but that conveys only a fraction of the many shades of meaning in the Māori concept of kaitiakitanga. Sacred texts present the biggest challenge. They often contain lots of metaphors and symbols, language that when you take it out of its original historical and cultural context, really loses a lot of meaning. In fact, many people consider them to be untranslatable. Translators of sacred texts are always on precarious ground. In Afghanistan in 2007, Ahmad Zalmai faced the death penalty for translating the Quran into Dari, a Persian dialect. Why? He hadn't realized that the original Arabic text should be included alongside his translation. Muslim priests were up in arms. In their eyes, Zalmai had modified and distorted the sacred word of God, and he deserved to die. When translating sacred texts, it's a good idea to have consulted the experts or custodians of that taonga so that you don't cause offense or appear disrespectful. Recently, a Māori translation of the Quran was published. It was translated over 20 years by a Pakistani gentleman who had taught himself Māori using a dictionary and a Bible. In his own words, not being Māori myself, there have been some limitations. Some people would dispute whether not being Māori himself, he should ever have attempted it. So there are lots of explosive issues to negotiate when translating sacred texts, and you need a plan of attack and some diffusing strategies. And that's what my thesis aims to provide. It will identify and examine these issues. It will blast the inadequacy of translation theory wide open and propose a set of guidelines to assist translators like myself so that we come to the battlefield with some decent ammunition. Uh -huh. Tēnā koutou. <laughs>